Good morning, Cedar Grove and Facebook family. Our Sunday school lesson this morning is entitled Trials and Denials. Our lesson text is coming from John, the 18th chapter, verses 15 through 27. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, we humbly bow before you this morning to say thank you. We thank you, Father God, for last night's rest and this morning's early rising. We thank you, Father God, for just allowing us to see this day. Pray, Father God, that as we go through this lesson this morning, that something in your word is said that will cause us to take notice of ourselves, Father God, and will cause us to inspect ourselves, Father God, and see that if we have faith in you enough to not deny you when the trials come. And for that, we say thank you. We just pray, Father God, that you go with us and stand by us. We thank you, Father God, because your grace and your mercy is sufficient. And when we go through trials, Father God, let us be strengthened. Let us be strong enough, Father God, to say that we know you and not say that we know you not. And for that, we say thank you. We just pray, Father God, that you go with us and stand by us as we go through this day because we know this is the day that we should live in, Father God. Yesterday is gone, and tomorrow is not promised. And we thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We pray, Father God, for the sick and the bereaved. And then we pray, Father God, that we do something in this day that will cause praise, honor, and glory to your name as people look upon us as your people, as your children, Father God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, our lesson. John chapter 18, verses 15 through 27. The title is Trials and Denials. Beginning at John 18, verse 15. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. This lesson picks up from last week's lesson where Jesus was arrested, he has now been taken to the palace of the high priest. After being bound, Jesus is led from the garden of Gethsemane by the soldiers and the servants of the high priest. Another disciple known by the high priest went along with them to the palace of the high priest, but Peter followed afar off or at a distance behind them. Verse 16, Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought Peter in. When the group held Jesus arrived at the palace, they entered in the gate of the courtyard, along with the unnamed disciple, but Peter stood outside the gate, and was only allowed in after the unnamed disciple had spoken unto the, the female or the damsel, as it's written in the lesson, that was guarding the gate. Uh, I put out the side is, it's always good to know somebody on the inside. Verse 17, then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. And that's, that's, as we would say, strike one. Because when the damsel or the guard asked Peter if he was one of the disciples, Peter said, no, I'm, I'm not one of them. Now, we're talking about Peter. We're talking about, I'm drawing my sword out and cutting your ear off, Peter. Peter was supposed to be a bold person. Peter was one of the people with that fire in him that when the fight started, Peter was, Peter was with it. As we would say, Peter, Peter was going to be a fighter. But now, and we're going to get to it, faced with a question because Jesus is arrested. Are you not one of the followers of Jesus? Are you not one of the disciples? No, no, that's not me. Question. Now, what kind of friend is that? 
I put this down here because let, let's let's life applications today. We hang with our groups. We got our friends. But when trouble comes, is that friend with you or against you? Is that friend going to let you be in that trouble by yourself? Or is that friend going to stand with you like they were when you were on top? Let's continue. Verse 18, and the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. And I found it interesting that they actually told how the fire was made. If you've ever made a fire, you know there's a difference between the way a fire burns when you make it with wood and debris than it does when you make it with coal. A fire that's made with coal, you, you gotta stand a little bit closer. You know, it's, the, the people had to be kind of bunched up with each other for, to stay warm by this fire, because a, a fire that burns with wood and debris, now that's a bright, that's a burning fire. It radiates a lot of heat. But fire with coal, you gotta get a little bit closer to it to stay warm. And I'll bring this out a little bit in a minute. Uh, verse 19. Uh, we're going to cover like two or three verses here. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Verse 20, Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why ask thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. Uh, Jesus was questioned, you know, about his disciples and about his teachings. Um, you know, one of the high priests, and this is part of, I guess, the, in the trial sense, a, and a cross-examination. You know, so he's being asked questions that he has to answer. And he told them, you know, I, I taught in the synagogues, I taught in the temples, I said nothing in private. You know, so why, why are you questioning me in this matter? You know, ask the people that I have taught, ask the people that I have spoken to, ask them what I said. And it's pretty much, they're trying to catch him up. And, and, you know, want to discredit him, uh, prove that he's not who he says he is, or to make it appear that the accusations they're bringing against him are true. And there's always somebody or someone who's going to say, oh, you're not who you say you are. You're not a Christian. Uh... How are you going to say you this? How are you going to say you that? And you acting like this. Well, Jesus was perfect. We are not. We strive for the perfection that Jesus had. We're not going to be perfect in everything we do. Yeah, somebody's going to say you're not a Christian. Somebody's going to say you're not this, you're not that. You don't really have to prove it to them. Let the Christ that's in you Prove it to them. God will verify you. And Jesus was telling them, you know, whatever you're questioning me about, all you have to do is ask those that I've already spoken to. They know. And they know the truth, which is pretty much what he was trying to tell them. Uh, in verse 19, the high priest, you know, asked about his disciples, his doctrine. Um, they feared Jesus. And these questions, you know, tell me about your disciples. Uh, how many of them do you have? Uh, where are they from? Where are they located? They wanted to know what type of opposition they would come up against 
once they had arrested Jesus, once they had captured Jesus, uh, the fear of most people who fight against God or protest against God is really who he has fighting with him. Because we can't fight for God. Fight God fights for us. We can only fight with him. He helps us win our battles. We don't help him win his. He's God by himself. He can win any battle. Let us move on. Verse 21, uh, verse 22. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answer thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, verse 23, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why spiteth thou me? Or why are you striking me? After Jesus responded to the high priest, an officer of the high priest standing near Jesus struck him. The background reading says that he slapped Jesus. with, a, And when it said he struck him with the palm of his hand, he, he hit him with an open hand. And Ask him, why are you speaking in this manner to the high priest? Why are you answering him like this? Uh, in a sense, you would think that the officer would seem angered or irritated by that. And Jesus' response to him was, if I've said something wrong, then prove that I said something wrong. But, if only thing I've done is good, or if I've done well or spoken well, then why are you striking me? Why are you angry by what I've said? If nothing I've said was wrong, then why are you upset? I got out of this. Not everybody is going to be happy with you if you tell them the truth. Because the truth will hurt. Not everybody's going to be satisfied with that. And not only that, telling the truth to some people will actually anger them. And I think we talked about it in our Sunday school our Bible study lesson the other night. We have to be careful the words we choose, the tone we take when we choose those words so that the people that we're speaking to will receive us in the manner in which it was meant when we put it out. And we're going to move on. Um, verse 24. Now Anas has sent him bound unto Cyphus, the high priest. At this point, after Jesus had told him, you know, if I said evil, then prove I said evil. But if I spoken well, then, you know, why are you against me? Anas, one of the high priests, I guess was in, in some of the background reading was at the point where he felt like he had gone as far as he could go. So he sent him to his son-in-law, Cyphus, which was also a high priest, to continue this trial. Verse 25, and Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said, therefore, unto him, art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. Strike two. To us, strike two. Because we, and here go this thing the pastor warned us about, as human, let somebody turn against us twice. That's strike two. You ain't got but one left. And we're going to cut you off, and when you cut off, we're done. Not Jesus. But we'll go further into that. 
we we not gonna get as far as I want to be, but we gonna we gonna go in. We gonna see some more of this. Peter again, the bold disciple, said, "I am not." Now he Peter has been one of the boldest disciples for Jesus that we read about. He was he was a fighter. He was he was a uh, he, yeah, he, he used a sword. He, Peter was probably, let's, let's just say in a bold sense, if Jesus had told the disciples, now speaking in our terms these days, boys, let's rumble. Peter was number two. He was going to be right there ready. If anybody was more ready, to go for Jesus, it would have been Peter. He was bold like that. Peter was going to fight no matter what. But here we go. Jesus has been arrested. His number one, Peter's number one, his main boy was arrested. And all of a sudden, Peter's not so bold anymore. Where does our faith go when we feel like Jesus is not with us? Where does our faith go? Peter's faith must have been shook mighty hard. And I'm going to say this. And I'm, I'm going to speak for me. I can be the boldest, probably meanest person you ever want to see. As long as I know that guy that's got my back can't be beat. But when it looks like He done lost all his power. I might ease over here and sit down somewhere. Because I ain't got nobody at my back no more. Peter's experiencing shaking faith right now. Because he's afraid that the same things that they're doing to Jesus right now is going to happen to him. Now, how many of us have experienced that shaken faith? We felt like we called on Jesus. Like we dialed him up. Hello, Jesus, this, this, this is me. I, 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 I need some help. I, I got your voicemail, but you need to call me back right now. And you don't get that call back. You didn't get it back today. You didn't get. You don't get it back tomorrow. You're starting to dwindle a little bit. Peter dwindled. He already denied Jesus twice. And before that, he was one of the the forerunners. He was one of the heavy hitters. He had a sword and he wasn't scared to use it. But now. Once again, art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. How many times have we said, I am not? Not just by word, but by action and by deed. How many times have we said, I am not? You don't have to say to somebody, I'm not a child of God. You don't have to say it. Some of your actions will show whose side you own. Ain't that, ain't that what you say, Brother Johnson? Whose side you own? Your words and your actions, your deeds will say whose side you own. That's what makes people look at you and say, 
There ain't no Christian. Not acting like that. But our fallback is, I'm only human. We got to be careful about that one. We're going to finish up 26, 27. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, said, did not I see thee in the garden with him? Tina, Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Uh, prophecy fulfilled. Jesus told Peter that he would deny him three times before the cock crew, or before the cock crowed, however y'all want to say it. I'm using what I'm reading. And it came to pass. Now, I read a little bit further down in the lesson, and I'm, I'm going to take you down there with me a little bit. Again, my, my question, what kind of friend is that? He denied Jesus three times. With us, that's strike three. I'm done with you. Shaking you off. I got to shake you off, and I got to move on. Peter denied Jesus three times. Uh, our lesson title was Trials and Denials. Jesus was on trial. Peter was the one denying. It would seem that as Jesus went through these trials, Peter was also going through a type of trial. This was trying of him to see if his faith was strong enough to stand up for Jesus even under dire circumstance. Now we read throughout the Bible from many people let's go with the Three guys in the fiery furnace. At their trial, they said, if God say so, we'll be consumed in the fiery furnace. But if not, we'll live. They stood up for Jesus. They didn't deny. But Peter denied Jesus. To me, at a time when Jesus really needed for him to stand up. So how many times are we going to be called on to stand up for Jesus and deny the call that we hear? And don't say you don't hear it because here, here goes our thing. I'm closing this thing. Something told me to do this. Is that right, Pastor? Something told me. Hey, something told you. Know when God is speaking to you. How do you know? Sunday school? What say, Pastor? Bible study? And you got a Bible at home? Read. The word says, study to show yourself approved. You'll know when God is speaking to you because he will give you that spirit to understand that when something told you, it's God speaking to you through the spirit. Don't be a denier like Peter was. Don't be one of those that says, I am not one of God's children. Because there's going to come a day when we all have to stand before the throne. And while you're standing before that judgment seat, if he looks down on you and says, you denied me, 
So now I'm denying you entrance. There's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. It's too late. And that, that, that kind of filled me up emotionally right here. You, you don't want to be too late. So don't let your trials, because the word says we will go through trials as his children. Don't let your trials cause you to deny who Jesus is. I'm done. Good morning, Cedar Grove. Please listen to the following announcements. In-person Bible study is every Thursday night from 7 o'clock p.m. until 8 o'clock p.m. The Young Adult Missionary Department is again collecting items for Thanksgiving baskets. This month's item is canned fruit. Boxes will be located in the Fellowship Hall. For further information, see Sisters Robin Johnson or Sylvia Patterson. Sunday, February the 13th is Super Bowl Sunday. Wear your team jersey, and I'm going to add t-shirt or team colors, whether NFL or collegiate, to represent your team. February announcer for the second Sunday is Sister Kate Graham. The Sunday School lesson for February the 13th, 2022, title, Pilot, What is Truth? This is coming from John, the 18th chapter, 28 through 40th verses. The Sunday School lesson will be led by Deacon Demetric Rozier. Coming events. In recognition of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated's 115th anniversary, Seven $15,000 scholarships will be awarded to juniors and seniors at an HBCU, which is a historically black college or university. The deadline to apply is February the 28th, which is coming up real soon, 2022. Go to tmcfallcaps.org for details. Please remember our sick, shut-in, and those requesting prayer. Please join us for morning worship service today at 11 o'clock a.m. here in person or via Facebook Live. And now, please join us for a moment in black history presented by Sisters Christiana Harris and Robin Johnson. Good morning. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We brave the belly of the beast, we've learned that quiet isn't peace. And the norms of notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours, before we knew it, somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country at a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge a union with purpose to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gazes not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know it to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. Now that we'll forever be tied together, victorious, not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again in so division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. 
If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. This is the promise to Glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare. It's because being American is more than pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than share it, would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy, and this effort very nearly seceded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth and this faith we trust. For while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of redemption. We feared as its inception, we did not feel prepared to be the hearers. Of such terrifying hour within it, we found the power to author a new chapter. To offer hope and laughter to our souls, so while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, a country that is bruised but whole, vanilla but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know inaction will be the next inheritance of next generation. Our blunders become their burdens, but one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright so let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left in. Every breath from my bronze pounded chest, we will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the golden hills of the west. We will rise from the winsome northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from lake room cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun-baked south. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover. In every known nook of our nation and every corner called country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge, battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Thank you.
long ways. Started out from the outhouse. And that's why it was called the outhouse, because it was outdoors. You had to go outdoors to use the bathroom. And my mother and father made sure that outhouse was clean. This is good as the in-house. But now we got a, uh, what we call a commode, john, whatever. That all you got to do is flush it. Some got the automatic flush. And some even so fancy, you know when you get through it, it sprinkle you down there. <laughs> we come a mighty long way. Then we got to stand. Uh, Mama said when they was coming to church, she had to walk to church. And she said she know when they heard that first bell ring, they had to start running. But they wouldn't be late when that second bell ring. Now we got our Lincolns, Cadillac, GMC, Weber, Weber. We come, Toyota, Nissan, we come a long, a long ways. Then we had to pump our wall. It was called the pump. And you better make sure you kept that priming wall beside that pump. You had to put it in that hole. And you had to first start out fast. I first do it, start catching. Then you get tight, 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 tight. And no matter what time of day you got that wall, that wall always came out cool. Cool. Now we got endo. All you use is what kind of water you want. You want hot, a cold, lukewarm. We come a long, a long ways. Then there was a day that called Howl Day. So like it was the coldest day in the winter. But I know my mother and my Aunt B always got together. And before we got Aunt B house, I'm the DJ. We already had them slow, them holes cut and slow and hanging. Then we had to get them wash pots, them wash pots together. Make sure you had your wood, and that was my job, to keep that fire around that wood. And you had to make sure you didn't get close to that fire. But you know, then we made our sauces. We made our pudding. We made our south meat. And we eat them things that even called chitlins. We did all that. But now we can go to the grocery store. And we can decide what we want. Hot, mild, spicy. Back in them days, it was only one. And you ate as it was. And this is my very last thing here. The diaper. One size, when I was coming up, one size, be all. You had to learn how to fold that diaper, but one size be all. And all of us was, was 15 to 8 months apart, never said me and Renee. So I had the pleasure of help washing her diapers. <laughs> and we, you know, my mom and them got a little thing, you had to wash them diapers before she put them into the outside washing machine. And then she wore them hang pretty on that clothesline. You do not hang my mama clothes in kind of way on that clothesline. But look at us now. We got the washer, the dryer, Delcy, hairy load, light load. We come a long ways. Leaning independent on Jesus. We came a mighty, mighty long ways. Thank you.